morning for this third Sunday of Advent. So there are a few things that I need to announce and let everybody know. Tonight at Tate's Chapel, we'll have our third installment of our, well, I think it's actually our, yep, third installment of our Advent series for the Keywood um, Asbury Cooperative Ministry. And so that'll be at Tate's Chapel at 6.30. And Reverend Jacob Countess, who is the one of the pastors in the in the cooperative, he will be leading the service and um, talking to us about unity in the church um, during this time. So his sermon title is Sanctuary, and it's going to be a pretty good, pretty good event if anyone can make it. Also, um, the next event, as in your announcement, is on Friday, December seventeenth at six p.m. Um, there'll be Christmas caroling hosted by Blackwell's Chapel, and they're going to have a fellowship dinner to follow. So if anyone's interested in going caroling, that's what they'll be doing. And then um, on December 19th at 6.30, also at Blackwell's Chapel, they'll be having um, the fourth installment of our kind of Advent series where the youth at Blackwell's Chapel will kind of put on a production, which is sure to be... Um, really wonderful um they're excited about it i'm excited about it so if we can come out and support that would be great i know that most of my fond memories in church are when we were fighting over who was going to be mary and having um our christmas plays and so and then rounding it out our december 24th christmas eve service will be at 6 30 at chilhawa united methodist so we're all welcome to go to that one as well as it's part of the parish so does anyone else have any announcements or anything that I forgot this morning to mention? I'd just like to say the parade, due to the rain, got canceled because tonight after the Lost Creek Festival. Okay, the Saltwell Parade is tonight at 6 o'clock. It is beautiful. We're very lucky to have such a beautiful church and people who make it that way. Okay, so now um, we'll have our intro, which is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, the fourth verse only on number 211 in your hymnal. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. We light this third candle of our Advent, Advent brief with the joy of welcoming a newborn babe, a King, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We worship you. God of joy, and we wait with the expectation of your coming. Amen.
Thank you very much, Chrissy and Jeff and Zach, who you can't see if you're watching the live stream, is operating the camera. <laughs> so now, if you'll please bow your heads with me for our opening prayer. Lord, we have come to this place from a world of demands and schedules. We have sought hope and peace and have found them here. Now we seek the inner joy that only your presence can bring to our lives. Open our hearts and our spirits to your love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn is found on 213 in your hymnals. Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates. for how I'm sounding this morning. Our first reading from scripture comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
Our gospel reading today comes from Luke chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers who asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts, concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The word of God for the people of God. Thank Thanks be to God. God. <laughs> so it's already December 12th. And I have to admit in full candor to the church that I definitely wrote that it was still November on a pretty important legal document last week that I had to refile with the court. So it, it's here. It's, it's the middle of December. Not just early in December, but December 12th. Also, again, in interest of being honest with the church, I have not purchased a single Christmas present yet. Now, this would be fun. My mother and father know now that I'm living under their roof that they probably don't want me to ask them to give, them, give me money to buy them a present. That will most likely be in a closet um, somewhere in our house where I have found every other present I've gotten them for the past 15 years. That's a story for a different time, not to expose my mom and dad. But, and my friends, like, Zach and I are old enough where we've pretty much decided that instead of purchasing each other gifts, we'll just go out to a movie or dinner or catch up. However, I'm blessed to have a lot of good friends who also have probably made the ill-advised decision to make me the godmother of their children. I have five godchildren to be exact. Two I share with Zach, Kenna and Kinsley. Then I have Mariah, Oakley, and Brayden who's expected to arrive in January. And when I tell you that they all expect a Christmas gift, I'm not lying. And if they don't expect it, their parents do. So I have a list that I've worked pretty diligently on, picking the right present for each child according to what that child likes. But even if I start purchasing things today, there won't be enough time to get everything to their intended beneficiary on time. I spent a lot of time worrying about what to get, worrying that I was being fair among all five of the babies to make sure that monetary values added up and everybody had equal things, worrying that Ken and Kinsley, who are 10 now, would not be interested in what they were interested in last year, worrying how I would even get Mariah's present to her because she and her parents live really far away, so I'd have to buy something that needed to be shipped. And I worried so much that I forgot to go and buy the gifts. Time got away from me this year. But again, to be honest, 
I've also been dragging my feet a little, hoping that maybe if I wasn't ready for Christmas yet, it wouldn't come. And maybe if it didn't come, my routine wouldn't have to change. You see, this is the first Christmas without Jimmy, as everybody knows. And so everything that me and my family have done for the past 27 years is gonna change. Every other Christmas before this one, my mother and I would get up early on Christmas Eve, as mad as I was about it, and we would deliver presents to friends around Saltville or visit people in the nursing home. And then we would go pick up dad from work and pick up Junie from her house, and we would go eat at Old Charlie's in Bristol because mama wasn't gonna cook on Christmas Eve. And then we'd drive around that really fancy um, neighborhood in Abingdon to look at the lights on the houses before returning to Junie's house to open presents. Then we'd go back to my house, Junie included, where we'd all spend the night together watching Christmas movies and drinking hot chocolate and waiting for Santa to come. And then mom would wake up, we'd open presents again and have a big breakfast on the table. Since June's been sick, or was sick, we moved those festivities to her house. We would get done with visiting on Christmas Eve and pack up all the food and all the presents and take them to her house so that we could be together to spend that time with her. And this is a phenomenon that we all share. We all have plans for Christmas, for Christmas Eve, and we all have routines that have changed because we've lost people, or our kids have grown up, or we're just not all together the way we used to be. Without Junie, I don't know what Christmas is gonna be like. But worrying about what will happen doesn't change that Junie has gone home. Spending Christmas time with her as much as I would have loved for her to be at my table this year, she's with Jesus at his. And I know that he doesn't burn the bread like I do. And while our routine will change and we will feel her absence, I still have my mama and my dad and all those godchildren and all of you. There's always a silver lining. Not preparing for Christmas doesn't mean that it won't come or that time will magically slow down. Christmas is coming. Jesus is coming, and what a blessing that is, whether we're ready or not. The people we read about this morning in Luke that John the Baptist spoke to didn't know that Jesus' is coming was a blessing. They weren't ready, and they were worried because their routines were changing too. In our reading, John the Baptist is speaking to the crowd about Jesus and what his coming to earth meant for people. And now we know what we know about John the Baptist. He was Jesus' cousin. He was a little bit older than Jesus. He was a prophet. But John the Baptist, I've learned through my research this week, was also a pretty strange guy. He was an odd character. He dressed really weird and had really strange habits that symbolized his rejection of the society that he lived in at the time. And he was pretty harsh in the way that he spoke to people. I don't know that I would ever feel comfortable standing up and talking to y'all and saying, you brood of vipers. <laughs> <laughs> but he did. He told people that because Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God was coming to walk on earth among us, that we can no longer be the same. Our routines had to change. The coming of Jesus was transformative, changing, unsettling, disruptive. He told the crowds of people that they had to share, that whoever had two coats should give the one they aren't using to someone else. Whoever has enough food should give to those who don't. He told the tax collectors to take only their part, only what was prescribed to them by their job, not more to pad their pockets as they had become accustomed in those times. He told the soldiers, the ancient police force, not to extort people 
or use their power against the citizens. And even when doing all of those things, even when we're being as close to perfect as we possibly can be as humans, there's nothing that we can do to be deserving of his coming. We can only bear the fruits of repentance, do works that are good, not to cancel out the bad that we do, because I don't think that's how it works, but y'all know I'm still learning, but to help our fellow human on their walk. John says, even those who follow God cannot count themselves as chosen because God makes those who are unworthy, worthy. Like the stones in the scripture reading, God can make disciples out of stones, sons of Abraham from something as lowly and unworthy as a rock. And aren't we thankful that he can do the same thing for us, sinners as unworthy as we are? John even tells the people that those who do not change, those who do not get comfortable being uncomfortable, who do not disrupt their routines, will be judged with swiftness. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So how is this good news? How is this the most wonderful time of the year? How is this Savior a blessing? He's not good for the tax collectors. He's not good for the soldiers, or really the people who wanna keep their stuff. He's changing everything. He's telling us that when we have enough to give more rather than to hold on to more, which is directly in opposition to the consumer side of this holiday and our own society that tells us we always need more or to do better. But it's good news because we know the whole story. We know that the bad news of God's judgment and the fact that he knows everything we do, good or bad, implies the good news of his mercy, that he knows our hearts and he knows our intentions. And the understanding that there is darkness, that means that there's a light that can always shine. Something can always be done. And although it may be tough for us to make adjustments, to change our routines, something can always be done because we're called to be joyful. Even in the midst of our suffering, because we have a Savior who came to change the world and to change us, as we move into these next few days and prepare for Christmas days, I pray that we remember the words of Philippians. And I pray we remember them so much that I'm going to read it to you again, just in case you didn't catch it the first time. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Because even when we're not ready, even when we're not joyful, even if we are unworthy for Jesus to come and live and die for us, we know he does it anyway, and he's coming anyway. Amen. Our hymn of response is found on page 89 of your hymnal, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
now we will move into our the time for our prayers. So does anyone have any prayer concerns, joys or concerns that they would like to lift up at this time? Um, I would like for everyone just to remember those who were um, the victims of the tornadoes this past week in Kentucky, um, especially the community of Dawson Springs, Kentucky. Um, that's a place that's really dear to my heart where I interned, or one of the attorneys I interned with in Kentucky, she's from there. So that entire community has really been decimated. Lake Glade Springs, when the tornado hit us, you know, they had never had anything like this happen before, so we're really, really very unprepared. Um, you know, as unprepared as anybody can be for something like that. So if we could just remember those who were affected by the tornadoes. And especially remember those people in Maple, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. That's what they're all doing yesterday. And you can just tell us, devastating their water, sewer, everything is gone. Mm -hmm. You know, when watching that last night, it reminded me of a town or a city that you would see in World War II after all the bombing and, you know, stuff like that. It was just, there wasn't really hardly a, a block And what was his last name, Robin? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're in here. I'm a, I'm a little confused. Well, good. Tony good. Friend of Robin's. Got it. Love it. Friend of Robin's. Robin's. Any others? Uh, Belle Weimer, she uh, worked with her for years. She's the secretary at Manson High School. And uh, she has COVID and is starting her third week on ventilators. So um, just remember her family and prayer. spoken requests at this time. Okay. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, you know that we try so hard to build things, to build homes, to build shelters, to build our lives, but there are so many things that happen in this world that we cannot control. Lord, please be with the people who've been devastated by tornadoes, Thank you for getting Marky out safely, but Lord, we know that so many others were not as lucky. Lord, we pray for all those who experience loss and who are suffering with sickness. We know that the sickness comes when it, when it comes and that all we can do is ride through the storm and pray that you have your hand on us and we know that you do. Lord, please be with the students finishing up their semesters. Help them stay focused and help them keep their eye on what's most important. 
Dear Lord, for the unspoken prayer requests, the things that we only say to you in the solitude and quiet of our own mind, please hear us and reassure us that you hold us dear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, we're going to move to the giving of our tithes and offerings. If our ushers would grab the offering plates in the back. And as we sing our doxology, please be reminded that the tune is a little different than normal. It's um, to O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, rather than the normal doxology. that resonate with us today. Bless these gifts that we have given to you so that where we have a coat, we may give another to someone else. That where we have food, we can give to those without enough. Amen. If you'll please be seated. We'll now have our prayer of confession and assurance, which is printed in your, hymn, in your um, bulletin. I will read... The unbolded parts, y'all read the bolded parts. O oh Lord, where a candle glows in the midst of winter, or a river falls in spring, you are there. Where a cradle rocks in the midst of suffering, or a hand is held in the midst of pain, you are there. O oh God, you are in our midst, and because you are here, we are strong. We would confess this, Lord. We would rather trust ourselves than trust you. We would rather venerate our past, our pride and family lines, honored traditions, historic institutions. We would rather worry on our futures than trust that you are already there. Help us to trust you, Lord. We cannot comprehend this thing about to happen, this baby who will be our savior. Let us embrace the good news. Saving us in a world that can be full of bad news. Be with us, Lord, as you send him to us. When the winter blows, lead us to the glowing candle. When the spring breaks, lead us to the glowing river. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven for the glory of God. Glory, glory be to God. God. Amen. It is this meal that we come in joy to celebrate together as Christ's brothers and sisters. So let us prepare our hearts <coughs> to feast at his table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. From the humblest of beginnings, you brought forth the great shepherd of your people. He shows forth your strength and your love and brings peace to the world. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Born of the Virgin Mary, he scatters the proud. He brings down the mighty from their thrones. He lifts up the lowly and fills the hungry with good things. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, he gave birth to the church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he was given, he was given up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink from this, do so in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ is Christ, is Christ is Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, <laughs> redeemed by his blood, that all might know your redeeming love. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray using the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who <coughs> trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, <coughs> the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks the sharing in the blood of Christ. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. 
Make us to be the presence of Jesus in our world today. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 347, Spirit Song. I invite you to stand as you are comfortable. in my mind. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. God will send us a Savior who will teach us how to live joyfully, peacefully, hopefully. Rejoice, people of God, for such is God's great love for us. Be safe as you leave this week and until we meet again. Amen. <laughs>